prophetic word. He declares what God sees over our life. And you know what happens? He pulls down our destiny into manifestation. And that's what's happening in our church. There is a manifestation of destinies awakening. After Sunday service, there was a shift in my life. I don't know about you, I deleted Netflix. I deleted some people off of Facebook. I deleted some relationship. Unless you are going to prophesy in my life, you have no business in my life. I don't need you talking about me. I don't need you whispering about me. I need people that are going to push me into my destiny. Something changed in my life. And I know it did for you too. I am so grateful for my salvation. I really am. Because I could have been average. I could have just been somebody. But I am called by God. And that is priceless to me. I thank God for this church. 15 years ago, I sat in the seats as a UTC student for a year. We would come every Sunday. Little did I know that this would be my church. I fell in love with the people. And and six years later, God blessed me with the man of God. And he was called to this church. And I love my pastors. I came in eight years ago rough. And you might say, no way. Yes, I was raw. And I had, I just needed a lot of work. And my pastors took me in. And they coached me. They trained me. And they still are doing that in my life. And I am who I am because of their leadership. And I thank you for that. I thank God for uh, Pastor Chris. He was my UTC director. Amy was my staff. I'm a product of the West Coast Training Center. But I also want to thank my church because we're not competing against each other. We are a part of each other. There's a shift together. And I'm so grateful to minister God's word. I'm just going to open in a word of prayer. God, you're already here illuminate your word let your word transform into principles and values in our life god you are calling us to a holiness you are calling us to a greater depth because of what you're going to do your word says that consecrate yourself for tomorrow i will do amazing things and lord we are consecrating ourselves we are shifting we are moving we are breaking because there is an awakening right in front of us and we open ourselves to it we give you all the glory set me aside help me to communicate the word that you've given me in jesus name we pray amen you could take your seat if you can turn to john 5 When you're there, tell your neighbor, don't talk about me. Prophesy over me. Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was Bethesda Pool with five covered platforms or porches surrounding. Crowds of sick sick folks, lame, blind, or paralyzed limbs lay on the platform waiting for a certain movement of the water for an angel of the lord came from time to time and disturbed the water and the first person to step down into it afterwards was healed one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years when jesus saw him he knew how long he had been ill and he asked him would you like to get well i can't the sick man said for i have no one to help me into the pool at the movement of the water while i'm trying to get there someone else gets in ahead of me and here was this man he was waiting for a move of god he was waiting for the waters to be stirred the pool of bethesda was a pool that represented a house of mercy and he waited there for 38 years and they say that history says that the pool would Begin to water, begin to like awaken, and 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 to currents would begin to happen in it when the the festival would happen of the Jewish, and so here he was, 
waiting year after year. And the, fe- the Jewish festival only happened three times a year. So he would wait. And around that time, 3,000 people would gather, they said. 3,000 people would gather for, for a move, for a movement in the water. And here he was waiting. Have you ever just waited for something? Waited for a move of God? He was waiting for his healing. He was waiting for someone to help him. He was waiting for an angel to stir the waters. He was waiting. Fill in the blank. What are you waiting for? 38 years in this condition. He was paralyzed. Unable to move or think clearly. The house of mercy became the house of misery. It was a bunch of sick people. Where was his mom? Where was his dad? Where was his friends? The Bible doesn't say he was an old man. He was a man. I'm thinking maybe 45, 38 years. That means he was just a child when he he went to the pool. And it was an unidentified sickness. Where was his family? Where was his friends? Where was his sister? Where was the church? Why was this man so paralyzed, not just physically, but in his mind? In verse 6, it says, God knew. God knew. God knew his situation. There are times the move of God happens because we are desperate. The time, there are times where the move of God has, moves because we have, we're full of faith. But then the, there's a move of God because God's just merciful towards us. We don't deserve it. We don't. What's happening in our church right now? We don't deserve it. And so here, here this man was. Jesus saw him. The Bible says that Jesus didn't go after or have eyes for anybody else but him. Mercy toward others begins on how we see them. There was a price that this man needed to pay for his healing. But mercy says, I'm going to do it anyway. And sometimes in our lives, and you, you sense the shift in our church, and God began to show me, it's not because of your faith. And yes, there are times God moves because of our faith. But this particular is, the move of God is because of the mercy of God on this church. He sees us. God's eyes are on you. It's on us. God, you feel God's eyes on us. Don't you feel disqualified? I feel unworthy. I feel like I'm so messed up. And when when Sister Georgina texts me, I'm like, I am so messed up. I I was thinking, God, I got to get my life together. Because that's what happens when mercy moves. Mercy is on our church. We don't deserve what God is doing and about to do. It's not your good looks or your qualifications. It's not your good service. It's because God's eyes are on you. He sees your condition. Sometimes we grow up or some of us have grown up in dysfunctional families. And sometimes all we know is all we know. And there are mindsets and strongholds that have been spoken over our life and transmitted from generation to generation. And I think that's what happened to this man. That he was a man not just paralyzed and sick, but he was a man that had been living the generational curses year after year. He was a man that was, his mind was torped. His mind was, he couldn't think past his situation. Things are not going to get better. I No, I, I, when Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? He couldn't even say yes. He couldn't even say yes. Reality is he didn't even recognize who was standing in front of him. He was waiting for a move of God in the pool, in the water. But the living water was standing right in front of him. And sometimes our mindsets and sometimes the way that we grew up limit us to Want God on a particular way, an experience that we fabricate in our life. Well, God's going to move this way. God's going to do this, this way. And when it doesn't happen, we, we sort of get disappointed. And we get more messed up. 
We become damaged goods in the house of God. And that's what this man was. He was damaged. Not just from generational curses. But who he, who he was hanging out with. He was hanging around with a bunch of sick people. His mind didn't shift. And what's happening here is you see this man. When Jesus asks him, do you want to be healed? He makes excuses. He makes excuses and he starts blaming people. Well, no one will help me. And when I tried there, someone got there before me. And what God was trying to do is help this man realize that his sickness was also the sickness of his heart. He couldn't see it. He was here, he, but he couldn't see it. He also didn't even recognize who Jesus was. Jesus spoke to him. And, you know, when Jesus prays for us and, you know, when people pray for us and they, they lay hands on us, right, we, we're like, yes, I, it's emotional and, 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 and it's, it's powerful. But this particular response that Jesus said to this man spoke to me because he began to prophesy and he began to speak the word into being. In the King James Version, he says, rise, take, and walk. It was with an authority. It was with an authority, and it was with a command, and it was with power. And he was saying, I know you've been through some stuff. I know life has not been hard for you. I know life has been hard for you. I know you didn't have a mom or a dad. I know you didn't come from a good family. I know that, and I see your condition, but I got to call things out. And I got to prophesy over you because I got to break the mentality because where I'm taking you, your mind is going to mess it all up because you're going to think the way that you think. And God can't pour new wine into old wineskins. And he was saying, I got to give you a new mind. And he says, rise. Rise above your physical limitation. Rise above your religious tradition. Jesus was asking him to do the impossible. He was on the floor, could not walk, but yet Jesus told him to rise. And it wasn't emotional. And it wasn't this old supernatural. No, it was the authority of the word of God that called him to rise. That's what God is asking us to do. When pastor began to prophesy and give prophetic words over us. I begin to say, oh, he's, he's, seen, he's seen what God has for us. And he's not coming with, oh, I'm just going to pray over you and I just want you to be touched. No, he's saying, thus saith the Lord, rise. Get out of your condition. It's in the mind. What's been limiting you has been in the mind. It's going to take effort. And this man had made excuses for a long time. It was going to take him some effort to get up. To get up. We're going to have to, to make some kingdom moves. You're going to have to put down the Netflix and pick up the word. You're going to have to stop talking about opinions and everything that was last year. And you're going to have to start speaking of all the things that God wants to do. Your words can bring life or death. And we have to shift. We have to shift the way that we talk. I, I came out of Sunday saying, I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to see the giftings on people. I'm gonna, I want to prophesy because they're going to manifest. And when it manifests, oh my goodness, there's going to be an awakening in our city. This man had to make effort. It was also the Sabbath. You could not do anything on the Sabbath. It was holy. You couldn't pick up your mat. Healings could not take place. And sometimes our, our beliefs, even though we, we get the word, sometimes it doesn't penetrate because we have beliefs that haven't been broken. And sometimes they're molded and shaped by our hurt, by our pain, by our upbringing, by the way our mother thinks, the way our father thinks. And it needs to break. Our beliefs need to break down. So that the prophecy can manifest. And your destiny could be pulled down. And you could do what God's called you to do. That's what this man had to do. Jesus spoke 
spoke the word into being. He spoke it. And I think that's where we're going as a church. It's time to stop whispering and diagnosing and giving our opinions. It's easy to do that. It's easy to do that. Well, I think this because of this. Well, maybe because of this. Because No, take me to the word. Prophesy it. Speak it into being. Thus saith the Lord, there shall not be lack in the house if we speak the word into existence. Because people will begin to understand when you speak it, the power is available. Sometimes we don't got power because we ain't speaking it. When Jesus spoke it, he said, take, rise, take, and walk. Power was released, and this man was able to get up. He couldn't do it as on a bill, even though he had to make effort. We need the power of God. Some of us come from hard backgrounds and mindsets, and God's trying to do a new thing and shift us, but it ain't going to happen until we start prophesying and speaking the word over each other. It's powerful. It's a weapon, and that's where we're going as a church. I just want to stay all night. I'm like, Pastor, prophesy over me. Speak. Tell me it's going to be the best year of my life. Tell me that new things are coming. Why? Because when you, when someone speaks it over you, you begin to feel, oh, yeah, that could happen. Oh, yeah, I could do it. Let's do this. When you see someone down in this church, prophesy over them. When you see someone going through it, don't question it. Prophesy over them. When you see someone discouraged in our church, walk up to them and say, oh, your blessing is coming. Get ready. Because all we need to do is inject people with the word of God, and then it will come alive. Don't give me a hug anymore. Tell me that I'm going to do greater things for God. If we're going to go to lunch, we're going to break out the word of God. We're going to have to make some radical moves. And this is what this man had to do. He had to make some radical moves. It might be unorthodox and we might be called holy. But if we want what God has for this church, we got to get right. It's, it's, it's going to be common having all night prayers at people's houses. It's going to be so common that we're just going to be at ch- houses every night just praying and praying and praying. Why? Because we're going to birth. We're going to birth something in our city. Your pain has not been for nothing. It has been the contractions of heaven, and heaven is about to birth a supernatural power over our church so that we can reach our city. For me, I'm tired of people struggling for years. I'm tired of praying the same prayer over people. I said, God, is it me? Do I not have enough power? Because I lay hands on them, and then I get my anointing oil, and then I lay hands on them, but sometimes I don't see the deliverance. But I said, okay, God. Okay, you're calling me to a greater holiness. Okay, God, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to disconnect from the world and every level so that I could go to greater dimensions and depths in the power and the anointing of God. He said, rise. Then he said, take up. Take your stance. Take your place. If there, if everyone's gift is awakened in this church, we're too big of a church to have needs. We're too big of a church to be asking, are you, can you, can you do, no, the gifting's in this house. It's actually dangerous to darkness when everyone is fully active in the house of God. Take your place. Get up. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Go 
God is changing our minds. He's transforming my mind. He's transforming my heart. I said, Lord, do it. What do I got to do? Then he said, walk. Walk in the word. Walk in the healing. Walk in the breakthrough. Walk in the next dimension. You see our pastors modeling it. They're walking in it. This isn't just a moment. This isn't just like a season where like, oh, yeah, fresh water. No, 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 my friend. This is, this is the new standard. This is where we're at. And you might be building your muscles and stretching out, but that's okay. You're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. He said, rise, take up, and walk. And he got up and he said, go to the temple. And he went to the temple. And of course, the Jewish leaders were like, what happened? You're not supposed to be walking. And he was just like, well, the man that prayed for me told me to get up and go. And, and see that God was breaking tradition. God was breaking religion. He was going against what everyone thought, saying, I still move. I still do what I want to do. I'm not moved by man. I'm not moved by what they want. And Jesus saw him in the temple again. And he said, don't sin anymore. Because what's going to happen to you is going to be worse. But you know what he's saying is that don't go back to the level you were at. You need to walk in prophecy. You need to walk in the word of God. Because any minute the enemy could steal it from you. We are in a war. He doesn't want us to tap into this. He wants us to be people that stay in our condition forever at the pool of Bethesda, sitting there and saying, no one helps me. No, one, no one's making room. That sister, God bless. That brother, God bless. And we sit there and maybe in self-pity. And we sit there in hopelessness. And we put our hope in something that's in the shadow of somebody else. But I want you to know that there's a river, a living river, the living God that is standing right here. There needs to be a greater awareness of the Father. I've been stepping on my fasting life, and I said, I need to be aware of you. Because, God, the way that you want to move, I need to not think the way that I think you should move. And it's very hard as strong people. We know how to make things happen. We make, we make it. That's how we're groomed in life. Life is hard. You got to hustle. You got to work. And to break that mentality is going to take a lot of dipping and a lot of oil. But it's okay because we're in this together. And we need to shift our mentality and say, God, make me have a greater awareness of you. It was his mercy that stirred the move of God that's taking place in our church. I feel it's parallel. I feel because God's eyes are on our church. They've been on our church. God has something special for our church. The, our pastor's calling is like none like no other. And, and his eyes are on us, not because of anything else, but because of the mercy of God. But we need to walk in prophecy as a piano player comes. It's a scripture that I've been just speaking and meditating over. And it's Romans 4, 17. It says, I are in, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, whom he believed, that God gives life to the dead and calls into being the things that were not. And I've been practicing this. I've been practicing this over people in my life. I've been practicing it in my life, and I've been practicing it. And it's a discipline because we're naturally could be negative. And we naturally could be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. We, we can naturally just diagnose things. And, and it's not been easy. I, I've been doing it for the last couple weeks, and it's not been easy because I want to. I said, God, shut my mouth. Shut my mouth if I'm going to speak death. Shut my mouth if I'm going to not speak it into existence. And I've been giving, I've been speaking.
speaking over my marriage, my health, my life, my family, my church, my pastors, my friends. And I, I, feel, I feel it in my bones. I feel the word of God being released. When you speak the word of God into existence, there is a power that is released. And you might be here. I see it. I, I receive. You gotta start speaking it. You gotta start speaking it. Don't gossip anymore. Don't 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 give your opinion anymore. Don't go off your experiences anymore. Because you might miss God. Just like this man. He missed God because he was stuck on the pool. There needs to be a greater awareness is as you stand. love my church you know because in dark times this has been my refuge it's been my place of safety it's been my place of dwelling I feel safe in the house of God and I, and I was praying for us and I felt God's eyes on us he's just like I'm, I see the OSD I, I've seen the endurance and the trials. I, I've seen your pastors and my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. There, there's been conditions. People have had certain conditions, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, whether it be generational curses, there has been conditions and one way or the other. And the Lord is saying, I'm coming to speak a word of prophecy over my people. And when pastor spoke that on Sunday, I said, oh, oh, you're pulling down our destiny into manifestation. It's going to take work. It's going to take a lot of work. As a body, as a move of God, we, 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 we got we to gotta keep each other accountable. I, I, I challenge you. I challenge you that you would prophesy more than you talk about things that, that, that are, 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 are the past or what was. Okay, I get it. Failures happen. Mistakes happen. But I want you to know that is not the end. That there is an awakening happening into our church. Call those things that are not as though they are. Your best days are ahead. I want you to know. I want you to know that God is birthing something inside of you. Oh, our pastor be pioneering the way. He wrote a book, but there's going to be more people that are going to use their gifting. As you close your eyes, I want you to prophesy right now. I want you to prophesy. I want you to prophesy. Shana, I want you to prophesy. I want you on that mic. I want you to speak words over our pastor, over our church, over our leaders, over the people in our church. Begin to prophesy. Begin to speak life. Oh, the season that you're in, it's going to get better. Oh, your pain, it's going to be your power. You're going to do greater 